much you're thankful for Calvary tonight. Yeah. Blessed be the name. <laughs>
conceit. And so that last part of that verse, be not wise in your own conceit, is, is talking about, hey, a lot. How many of you have ever suffered from pride in your life? Come on now. Come on now. Don't leave me, don't leave me up here hanging all by myself. We, I think we've all done that. And, and so the Bible is telling us, listen, if we want to have harmony in our life, if we want to have unity in our life, listen, we cannot be prideful people. We can't be arrogant people. We can't look down on one another. In fact, the Bible tells us here, uh, be of the same mind one towards another. Be of the same mind. Listen, we need to be lifting one another up instead of tearing one another down. We need to put others before self. And I think that that's a lot of the reason why we have conflict in our lives is because rather than putting others before ourselves, we put ourselves before others. We put what we want instead of, instead of what other people want. Want. Now, now, so long as it goes, so long as they want what the what the Lord wants, hey, everything's good. But so, how important is harmony? How important is unity in our life? I, I can tell you, it's very important. In fact, it was one of the last things that that Jesus Christ prayed for us about. Look with me, if you would, please, to John chapter seventeen. John chapter seventeen. <coughs> In John chapter 17, Jesus Christ was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was, he was praying to God and, and he was, <clears throat> excuse me, he was talking to God about, about the disciples. But then in these passages, in these verses, he wasn't only talking to God the Father about the disciples, but he was talking to God the Father about every single one of us that know uh, Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We'll pick up reading there in verse number 20 and read down through verse number 23. The Bible says, Neither pray I for these alone, talking about the disciples, but for them also which shall believe on me through their words. That's us. And, and it says that they all may be what? One. As thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. That the world may be, excuse me, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that, uh, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved me. As thou hast loved, has loved them, as thou hast loved me. And hey, listen, our Lord, our Lord and Heavenly Father, our our Savior, prayed. Hey, listen, I want these people to be one of one mind. I want these people to be unified to work together. It's important that we work together, that we are in unity, that uh, that. When we have conflict, and we will have conflict because every single one of us, we have flesh and we have our desires. And, and so there will be conflict. But when that conflict arises, hey, the, the Bible said, or Jesus Christ has said, listen, help them to be one. That's how important it is. Listen, one of the very last things that Jesus Christ prayed for, for you and I before he left this earth is what we are one. That we are unified. That there is no conflict. That we can work together. Not only is it so important that Jesus Christ prayed uh, for us. That, that we would be one together. But, but also the Bible commands it. The Bible commands that, that we are unified. That we have harmony. Are, in, are living in harmony together. In Romans chapter 14 and verse number 19. Romans chapter 14 and verse number 19. Romans chapter 14, verse number 19. The Bible says, Let us therefore follow after the things which, uh, which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. 
Also, Romans chapter 15, verse number 5 and verse number 6. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one towards another, that we are unified one towards another, that we are living in harmony one towards another according to Christ Jesus. That ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. Verse number 27. The Bible says this. Philippians chapter 1, verse number 27. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your, of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 1 and verse number 2. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 2, verse number 1 and verse number 2. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercy, fulfill ye my joy. Listen, this is the joy <clears throat> that Paul was talking about here. This is the joy of, of Paul, and, and I can tell you it's the joy of our Lord and Savior as well, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Hey, listen, uh, God has commanded that we live in harmony, that we live in unity one with another. Not only is it so important that Jesus Christ, the, uh, one of the last things he prayed for was for our unity. Not only is it that the Bible uh, uh, commands that we, that we live in unity and in harmony, but also the early church practiced it as well. The early church practiced it. Now I'm, now I'm trying to give you the, the importance of us living in unity. And so the early church practiced it. Look with me, if you would, please, to Acts chapter number 2. Acts chapter number 2. Acts chapter number 2, verse number 46. The Bible says... And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Hey, listen, the, 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 <clears throat> the early church lived in unity. They lived in harmony. They, they said that, that they were in singleness of heart and continuing daily in one accord or with one accord in the temple. In Acts chapter 4 verse number 32 the Bible says this the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things in common. Listen, what an amazing way to do church. What an amazing way if we would just go back to the primitive church, the, the beginning of the church, and live the way they lived. Be unified the way they were unified. Hey, they had everything in common. They had all of their, their possessions. They said, hey, this isn't mine. This is, this is all of ours. It's the Lord's. And so, listen, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. My, my pickup truck out there. Listen, I, I just said it's my pickup truck. You know what? It's, it's not my pickup truck. It's the Lord's pickup truck. And listen, I, I don't have a problem at all. If, if someone needs to use it, hey. God supplied it, and who am I to say, hey, you're not using, you're not using my pickup truck. Well, how often do we do that anyhow? To have unity and harmony in our church, in our home, and in every relationship, we need to understand the cause of disunity, the cause of 
disunity or disharmony. And, and there are several of those tonight. I'm going to give you uh, five of them. But number one is change or growth or unmet needs. Change or growth or unmet needs. And, and uh, there's a Bible passage in, in Acts chapter 6, verse number 1 through 6. Listen, we, I've got Bible passages for each one of these. And we're not going to take the time to read all of them tonight because we won't have time. Uh, but but I'll just I'll just give you the gist of what was going on there. Listen, this was at the at the uh, the primitive church, the beginning of the church, and the church was go, growing so fast here in Acts chapter number six, uh, verse number one through verse number uh, six. The church was going so fast uh, that the disciples couldn't meet the needs of everyone in the in the church. And so there was some dissension. There were some people that were getting upset because one person's needs are getting met and the other person wasn't. And so they had to have a meeting and they had to vote in <clears throat> seven other guys uh, to come and help so that the so that the disciples can concentrate on on studying the word of God's. So that they can give the gospel of Jesus Christ and give the word of God uh, to the people while those other seven can attend to the needs of the people. Listen, change uh, and growth and unmet needs causes conflict. We haven't had any change here recently, have we? Absolutely not. Of course we have. Listen, Pastor Lindsay's been here for 45 years. And then here comes this guy from Texas. What in the world is he doing? Right? We've had some change here. We've had, we've had some growth in the church since we've been here as well. Listen, we've got new people even here tonight that weren't here, that weren't here uh, much last year. And so we praise the Lord. And so, listen, change has a tendency to cause conflict. Growth and unmet needs. Another cause of, of disunity or disharmony is theological differences. And I hope and pray that we don't have any of this one here. But here, there in Acts chapter number 15, verse number 1 through verse number 17, <clears throat> there were theological differences uh, that caused disharmony. Paul and Barnabas were out giving the gospel of Jesus Christ to the to the Gentile people, and they went and went back and, and told the people of Judea and, and uh, some of the other disciples that that hey, the Gentiles are receiving salvation; they're receiving Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And listen, there was contention there. There was there was disunity there because the, some of the people in the in the in Judea were saying, hey, they've got to be circumcised before they can. Hey, there, there, was, there was theological differences that causes disunity. Another cause of disunity uh, and disharmony is philosophical differences. Philosophical differences. And you see that in, in Acts chapter 15, verse number 36 through verse number 41. Paul and Barnabas, again, had philosophical differences. Barnabas wanted to take Mark on their, on, uh, on their second missionary journey. But Paul was saying, hey, no, 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 we're not taking that guy. He left us on the, on the first missionary journey. He's not coming with us on the second missionary journey. And Paul and Barnabas, listen, they had, they had a little bit of a contention between them. But can I tell you, they did not let that divide the church. But they decided to disagree. To agree to disagree. And can I tell you, even two godly people can have their differences on how to fulfill God's will. And that's okay. That's okay. Can I tell you, we don't all think alike, do we? We don't all think alike, and that's not a problem. Unless you let it be. Listen, you don't think like I do. And therefore, you don't have the you don't have the 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 friends that I have or the acquaintances that I have, and but but it goes vice versa as well. I can't I can't minister to your friends the way you can. You can't minister to, to, to those people that my friends and those people that I come in contact with like I can. Listen, 
Listen, they can reach people that, that I'm not going to reach. You can reach people. Listen, you go to places that I don't go to. <coughs> I go to places you don't go to. You can reach those people. I can reach those people. It might not look the same. You might not use the exact same verses to, uh, uh, to give someone the gospel of Jesus Christ as I would. I hope that they would intermingle sometime, but because they all come from the word of God. But, but listen, <coughs> we don't do things the same way. There are some philosophical differences and but we don't have to let that divide the church. We don't have to let that divide us. And we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. We are all we are all working for the same thing, and that is to lead someone else to God. To give the gospel of Jesus Christ to someone else. Another Cause of disunity or disharmony is uh, disharmony is uh, personality differences. Personality differences. There in Philippians chapter four, verse number two and verse number three. Uh, I'm going to murder these names: Yodius and uh, Syntyche uh, were sisters in the church, and they, yet they couldn't speak to one another. They were divided, and, and, Paul, and, and Paul was there uh, asking for counsel for these people because they were, they were <clears throat> though they, they had uh, personality differences, listen, they were working for the same thing. Well, we ought to be, shouldn't we, brothers and sisters in Christ? These were sisters in the church who weren't speaking to each other. Because of some difference they had. There are certain people with, with whom one can't, one can't work together. I understand that there are people you just can't work with. I have, I have tried working with those types of people as well. But I just can't work with them. That doesn't mean that I have to be mean to them. I have to, I have to have, there has to be a division in between, between that person and me. Listen, they do their job the way they need to do it. I do mine the way I need to do it. Hey, we can have fellowship afterwards. We don't have to be enemies. You don't have to allow for disharmony. Again, they can reach people that you can't. And then the fifth cause of disharmony or disunity is carnality. People living like the world. Brothers and sisters in Christ living like the world. And that's, uh, you can read about that in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse number uh, 1 through verse number 23. Let me read verse number 1 through verse number 3 for you. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse number 1 through verse number 3. The Bible says, <clears throat> And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. Even as unto babes in Christ, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. For you are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and division, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Hey, listen, when there is envying and strife and division in the church, there's carnality. There's pride. Potentially arrogance. That ought not to be in the church. That ought not to be in our relationship as brothers and sisters in Christ. So how do we restore harmony? How do we restore unity in our relationships? I'll spend the rest of the time this evening on this. How do we restore uh, unity in our relationship? Number one is don't tolerate disunity. Don't tolerate disunity. Look with me, if you would, please, to Romans chapter number 12. Romans chapter number 12. Verse number 18. The Bible says, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably 
with all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Hey, hey, can I tell you, as far as it depends on you, don't allow disunity. You may have a, a uh, something going on with you and someone else in, in the church or in your family or in your uh, relationship somewhere. Listen, you can choose. Hey, I am not going to allow disunity. As long as it, if it is possible with me, as much as lies in me, I am not going to allow that. I'm not going to allow myself to get upset and to, and to, to, to uh, cause a division between me and my brother or me and my husband or me and my, you put the other person there. As far as it depends on you, hey, listen, don't avoid it. If you see this unity there in, in a relationship that you have with someone else, don't, don't try to avoid it. It's not going to go away. You gotta, you gotta work on it. You gotta, you gotta do what you can to fix it. Don't, don't avoid it. Don't procrastinate. Don't kick it on down the road and say, "Oh, uh, we'll just, we'll just ignore that for right now. We're just gonna keep on going." And no, don't kick it down the road. It's not. Again, it's not gonna go away. Don't delegate it to someone else. Don't say, "Hey." Well, you go, listen, there is, there is something going on between me and, and, and this person, and, and this is what it is. Hey, why don't you go over there and you talk to him? No, 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 no. That's not the way to do it. That's not the way to do it. As much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. And then don't try to rationalize it. Don't try to rationalize it. This is this is denial. That's you saying, nah, you know what? That's not that's not really it's not really disunity. It's just uh well, I don't know what it, what it is, but it's not disunity. No. Listen, if there if there is something between you and another person, don't ignore it. Take care of it. This is the, that's, that's the reason why the Bible tells us, listen, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Because if you let it go, it's going to fester in your mind and fester in your mind and fester in your mind. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Listen, this little bitty problem all of a sudden becomes a big one. Because in your mind, oh man, they might as well have, might as well have, and run over you or, or, or burn your house down or something. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It might have started out with something small. Listen, don't kick it down the road. Don't ignore it. Don't avoid it. As much as lies in you, live peaceably. You, listen, you've got to, you've got to, in order to get rid of it, you've got to confront it. You've got to confront it. How do we restore unity and harmony? Secondly, is that we we've got to accept conflict as something that's normal and inevitable. What? Come on, Pastor, I don't want to have I don't want to accept it as something normal and inevitable. Let's look with me if you would to John chapter 16. John chapter 16. <clears throat> the Bible says this in verse number 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Hey, listen. Why, why do I need to accept conflict as... As, as something inevitable, as something that's going to happen, because I ha I live in flesh, and so do you. This flesh has its desires, and yours has its desires. And sometimes those desires, they just clash. 
Sometimes conflict is inevitable. But we don't have to allow it to cause disunity if we will just take care of it. If we will confront that conflict. And one of the one of the number one weapons that the devil uses against the church, you know what that is? Divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. I am so looking forward to seeing what God has for Eastside Baptist Church in this, in this new year. I am, I am so excited about what God is doing and what he has planned for us in this year. But I can tell you, if there is division in this church, we're not going to see the blessings of God. If there is division in this church, the devil is going to conquer us if we don't take care of it. If there is conflict, we're not going to be able to honor and glorify and worship and praise God the way we ought to be. The devil's number one weapon against us, the church, is to divide and conquer it. Because we all have flesh. And every once in a while, we all have problems with other people. That's okay. Sometimes that's inevitable. But when we see that that conflict is there, we take it on, head on. We take it on, head on. Another way to resolve conflict in our lives, in our relationships in our life, is to be the initiator of conflict resolution. Hey, don't wait on that other person. Oh, well, Pastor, you don't understand. He's the one that did it. Well, she's the one that did it. She needs to come to me. He needs to come to me and apologize to me. He did it. It's not my fault. As much as possible, as much as it lies within you, live peaceably with those around you. Hey, listen, in order for us to be able to get rid of conflict, to resolve the conflict in our relationships in our life, hey, we need to be the initiator of resolving it. We need to do that. Look with me, if you would, please, to Matthew chapter number 5. Matthew chapter number 5. Verse number 23 and 24. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that, what, what does it say? That thy brother has aught against thee, says, leave thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. He says, listen, if you remember that your brother or your sister or your mate or your whoever it is that they have ought against you, hey, you be the initiator. You go over there and tell them, hey, this is going on and we need to, we need to take care of this. We need to take care of this so that we can go on with our lives, so that we can honor God, so that we can receive the blessings that God has for us. You be the initiator. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Verse number 15. The Bible says this, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, Go and tell him his faults between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Listen, in order to be able to have conflict re resolution, you've got to be the initiator of resolving that conflict. You've got to go and say, hey, brother, hey, sister. Husband, wife, child, friend, whoever it may be. Hey, there's some conflict between us and, and I'd like to get it settled. I'd like to get it settled. And tell you, 
As you do that, you need to watch what you say and how you say it. All right? You need to watch what you say and how you say it because, because that right there, the way you say things or the words that you use to try to resolve the conflict or the attitude that you use with those words can make the conflict even worse. You got you to gotta keep yourself in check. You got to make sure that Let your taking some respirations, deep respirations before you go and and confront that person. Whether it was you or them, you take the initiative to resolve the conflict. That's what Matthew chapter 5, verse number 23 and 24 is talking about. And then another uh, way to make sure that uh, we have resolution for our uh, or our conflict is resolved is to deal with yourself before dealing with the other person. And, and can I tell you, this is of utmost importance. Of utmost importance. Make sure that you're right before you go and talk with them. And I'm not saying make sure that you're right with them or other people around you. You make sure you're right with God. Because if you're right with God... You're going you're gonna to be right with that person. You're going to have the right words. You're going to have the right attitude. Look with me if you would to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Beginning in verse number, well we'll just read verse number 41 and verse number 42. The Bible says this, Why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Either how canst thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, when thou, hast, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of, out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see to clearly to pull out the moat that is in thy brother's eye. This, this passage is telling us, hey, rather than looking at them and searching out their defects, searching out what's wrong with them, what they're doing wrong, yeah, you need to look inside yourself first. How can I have prevented this conflict? What could I have done differently? Lord, how is my attitude? Lord, what kind of words did I use? Hey, we need to, we need to look at ourselves. Make sure we're right with God before we go and confront that other person. And then as we deal with ourselves, we get ourselves right with God, we ask God's forgiveness, and then we have the opportunity to go and to our brother or our sister, whoever it may be that we have the conflict with. As you are trying to resolve the conflict, I I'll tell you, you need to meet as quickly as possible. As quickly as possible to resolve the conflict. Again, don't kick it on down the road. Don't say, oh, it'll be better tomorrow. Don't ask somebody else to do it. Don't ignore it. Listen, you need to meet as, as quickly as possible to resolve it. Because just as I said, the longer you wait, the bigger it gets. The longer you wait, the bigger it gets. And there are some things that you need to talk about when, you're, when you are uh, talking to that person. You have, you have the what, the how, the why, and then the question. The what. 
whenever you're talking to the person to resolve the conflict, means you calmly describe what the other person is doing to cause conflict. Did you catch the very first word that I said? Calmly, exactly. Calmly. Calmly tell the, or describe to that other person what it is that is causing the conflict. And then the, the how. Say how it makes you feel. Hey, don't be afraid to, to express your feelings. Hey, this is, this is what's going on. This is where our conflict is. And I, I'll tell you, I just don't feel comfortable. I'm having some difficulty with it and, and it, and it makes me upset. The why. Say why it's important to you. Why, why, is, why is this particular thing important to you? Why does it make you feel the way you feel? And then the question is what are we going to do to solve it? What are we going to do to solve the conflict that we have with one another? It, it's, not, it's not you. It's not them. Well, they're the ones that did it, so it's got to be them. No. You have the conflict with them, so you too have to work together to figure out how to fix it. What needs to change? What needs to be done? How to fix, how to solve the, com the, the conflict. And then, and then listen, you need to animate your, your response. I mean, and what I mean by animate, I'm just, I'm just talking about, listen, sit down with them. Sit down with them and, and talk through it. Figure it out. Figure out how to work through it. Figure out exactly where it is. A lot of times, again, the conflict is because of pride. I have my way of doing it. And if it's not my way, then it's wrong. Right? No. All of us have, have different ways of doing different things. Just because I do it differently than you doesn't make my way wrong, and nor does it make your way wrong. If we come out with the same, with the with the same conclusion, which is Hopefully in the ministry, which is someone getting saved or someone learning, uh, learning the, uh, more about God or someone getting closer to God. Hey, wonderful. Another thing as you're sitting there talking to this person that you have the conflict that, uh, uh, with is not only sit down and talk through it and figure out how you're going to work it all out but also write down the action that you want performed. Write down the actions that you want performed. What is, what is it? What does resolving this conflict look like? What needs to take place? Hey, write that down. Both of you sit down together and write these things down. Then set a specific time to review the topic. Hey, you may not, you, as you're sitting there talking with this person about the conflict, you, you may sit there, you may tell them, you may tell them what happened, you may tell them how it happened, how it makes you feel. You may have asked them, listen, what are we going to do to, to take care of this? You may have sat down and, 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 and described everything, but you might not get to the resolution right then and there. Hey, but you're working on it. If you have to hit, if you have to take time uh, and, and and go away, hey, set a time limit where you two get back together and say, hey, let's finish this out. Let's resolve this once and for all. And then you can sit down and say later on, you can sit down and say, hey, how are we doing with this? Because hey, I don't, I don't want to have conflict with you. And I don't want you to have conflict with me. Are we doing better? 
And then this is very, 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 very important. Both of you make a commitment to leave the problem in the past resolved. Once it's resolved, leave it. Give it over to God. Don't mention it to anyone else. Don't mention it to that person anymore. And don't, don't mention it in your own mind anymore. Hey, it's over. Move forward. Because if you mention it to anyone else, hey, what, what are you doing? Hey, that's not over. It's not over in your mind. If you're mentioning it over and over and over and over in your mind, it's not over with you. You don't have resolution. Don't. Once the, once the conflict is resolved, hey, it's over. Sometimes that's hard to do, isn't it? Because sometimes things that, that uh, you th that, that, that are over, they just come back in your mind. But whenever they do come back in your mind, you say, hey, self, hey, that's over. We are good with that. That's in the past. We're moving forward. If resolution doesn't occur, follow the biblical steps of Matthew chapter 18. Again, number one, it needs to be you and that one person. Or however many people are involved, it needs to be you and them getting together. And then if it doesn't get resolved, then you follow the steps of Matthew chapter 18. This is uh, talking about discipline. Not only in the church, but it is talking about discipline in the church, but it's also talking about discipline in our lives. Well, how do we resolve conflicts? This is it right here. Matthew chapter 18, there are verse number, picking up verse number 15 through verse number 17. The Bible says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. If he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neg uh, neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and, and as a publican. So there are four steps. One is you and him alone, or you and her alone. Two, you, that person, and one or two other people for witnesses. The third step is for the church. And then the fourth step is consider him a publican. Consider him a heathen. Now, what does that mean, consider him as a publican or a heathen outside of the, outside of the church? Hey, let me, let me tell you this. Every time there is conflict in the church, every time... Or even not in the church with a brother or sister in Christ. The, uh, the desire is not separation. The desire is unity. To, to fix that relationship. Not only between you and that person. But between you and God and, and that person and God as well. The desire is that we are unified. We work together. That's the, that's the purpose of discipline. That's the purpose of conflict resolution. Hey, that we're no longer separated, that we're no longer divided, but we are unified in one mind to honor and glorify God. In conclusion, look with me in Psalms chapter 133. You know what? I'll just read it to you. Psalm chapter 133, verse number 1. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity.
Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. We have conflict every once in a while. We do. And we will. But we should not allow that conflict to create disunity in our relationships in our life. We should not allow that conflict to create disharmony in our relationships. Hey, listen, if we're going to if we're going to resolve that conflict, we need to meet it head on. Don't kick it down the road. Hey, when we realize that there is conflict, hey, you go to that person or I go to that person and say, and, and I've got to be honest with you. That's one of the things that I struggle with because I hate conflict. I hate confrontation. I have to make myself go to that person and say, hey, we better talk. But if it's going to get resolved, that's got to happen. That's got to happen. So in your life, you have conflict. Maybe you're in conflict right now with someone. You know what? It's time to get fixed. It's time to resolve that conflict. Hey, meet that conflict head on. Don't kick it down the road. Talk to people. Watch your words, your attitude. Talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. If you can't resolve it then, then take your one or two witnesses. If you can't resolve it then, go to the church. Talk to, talk to the pastor of the church. If you can't, if it doesn't hear the, the, the church, then hey, it's time to move on. Push, push that over here. Push them over here outside of the church. Not to, not to humiliate them. Not to uh, dishonor them. But so that the Lord can deal with them. And the Lord will deal with them. Just like the Lord will deal with you if it's you. Deciding not to resolve the conflict. If you'll please stand. Let's go ahead and stand with our heads bowed and eyes closed. I'll stay in the